Welcome to Meat Bone Express, the filmmaking podcast. Today on the program is Bill Mazoulis, independent filmmaker and the original creator of Centers of Cinema Film Journal. Today we're talking about his new website, Pure Shit, which is about independent filmmaking in Australia. Bill, welcome to the program. Thank you very much, Mike. What is Pure Shit? Pure Shit, um, I'll tell you the first thing, is that it's, a, it's an Australian classic film from 1975, directed by Bert Deerling. And uh, it was about, uh, it's kind of like a ramshackle narrative about a group of uh, junkies uh, sort of just roaming around looking for a hit. And uh, the film was uh, a bit reviled at the time and had to change its title from Pure Shit to Pure S. Um, but it's, uh, it's had a bit of an influence, I feel, on the Australian independent film scene. A lot of filmmakers have cited it as a, as a great film and as an influence on them. And I just thought I'd uh, create, I'd just use, uh, use the title of that film, Pure Shit, uh, for the title of this journal, uh, this website on Australian cinema. Just to be a little provocative, maybe, but also just to push the idea of um, kind of independent filmmaking. What do you hope to achieve with your uh, new film journal? I just want to um, push uh, alternative uh, independent Australian cinema uh, and also be a voice uh, against um, Australian mainstream cinema, which uh, for me has become very mediocre in the past 10 or 15 years now. Uh, and also Australian film culture has some, pro has some problems. Um, where it's just become very conservative and you know funding has dried up for certain things and 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 I feel that a lot of the indie uh, experimental underground filmmakers uh, are just not getting very far at the moment they're not being appreciated uh, they're not uh, getting into film festivals they're not being written about much uh, so for me this website will hopefully correct that a bit I mean Census of Cinema was created in 1999 um, so that's a full, you know, 18, 19 years back now. And uh, there weren't many journals, as you say. There weren't, you know, blogs. There, you know, social media practically didn't exist. Um, at the time, uh, I felt that there was a need for writing to, within Australia uh, to push a certain um, uh, analysis and appreciation of kind of art cinema that was around at the time and I could see that there really wasn't much uh, happening uh, certainly within Australia the the journal screening the past from La Trobe Uni existed but that was pretty much an academic journal and I wanted something a bit fresher uh, with some voices in there uh, from even just filmmakers or or your average kind of cinephile who you know, has not kind of studied uh, semiotics or whatever. How do you feel about Senses of Cinema almost two decades after you originally created the website? My feelings at the moment are, are, are pretty neutral about it. Uh, as the years have gone on, I've lost more and more touch with it. Uh, but I guess it probably has changed a, a little bit, um, gone a bit more towards the academic style. Uh, it has... Uh, those kind of academic uh, articles in there, uh, the refereed, the peer refereed type articles, uh, essays. Uh, so I guess it's not as um, uh, eclectic and not as loose. <laughs> I think I, re I remember when we um, when we started or when I started it together with Fiona Villela, she was there at the start. Uh, we sort of had it in our tagline, something about um, an eclectic approach to, to, to cinema. Um, so I think the, the eclecticism has probably dropped out a little bit now and it's probably become just a little too serious and, and dry. But, but I, I still I think it's great um, that it exists and it's still like doing a lot of um, interesting uh, essays on, on, on good subjects. Um, it, had a, it had a great dossier a few years ago on John Flouse. Uh, when he on the occasion of his 80th birthday and and it was fantastic tribute to him because you know tributes normally come to people after they die but Flousey got to read all that stuff before he died so I'm really happy about that. You've worked as a, a independent filmmaker on micro budgets um, 
uh, both in Australia and, and Greece. Uh, can you tell us about your methodology and, and how you're able to get these projects across the line? Uh, Micro-budget um, feature filmmaking is something I'm very familiar with, having uh, started to do that uh, in the 90s, um, firstly with a couple of Super 8 features and then with 16 mil work and then digital work. Uh, so for me, going to Greece about eight, nine years ago and sort of half living there, uh, I, I wanted to, you know, make a, a film or, or two in Greece. And I ended up in the last six, seven years making two feature films there, pretty much uh, with no money, uh, micro-budgeted. And, and it was exciting just um, uh, y utilising my uh, methods for that uh, in a different country. And so you see the, the differences and the differences are pretty much just uh, how people operate and uh, the culture of it and, you know, what times you can work during the day and, and all these kind of things. But, but I found that, of course, Greece is a country in crisis. So I found that people were very willing to, to help out um, without getting paid and, and to really experience uh, the whole adventure of making a film. Whereas here in Australia, I think it's getting a little harder to do that. And, and all, most of the actors are just wannabe stars. And so they're just conscious of that. Whereas in Greece, you know, they'll, they'll just do something for, for the sake of itself, for the sake of the adventure and, and more for the art uh, in itself, actually. And the main thing is to make sure that your artistic vision, uh, as the cliche goes, uh, comes to fruition. And the money in the end doesn't matter one little bit it's all about the work. It, that, that's more about yeah, the, the energy that's set up uh, with the film. It's about the relationships between the people. Um, it's about uh, having fun. It's about uh, doing something that's interesting. And, and I think uh, if you do all those kind of things, it really doesn't matter if you've got a little bit of money or none. I think the Cassavetes rule is very good where we all uh, work hard together, uh, maybe without a budget, but we make sure that we eat well and that there's a good dinner at the end of the day. I like the scene in uh, Woman Under the Influence where Gina Rollins feeds them a big meal of spaghetti. That's what we need, yeah. <laughs> it's actually not, not about money at all and, and about if, if your film might get picked up in festivals and for, with a distributor. Um, sometimes um, micro-budget... Uh, uh, filmmaking is the only way forward uh, for a particular kind of film and this this particular kind of film has to be made uh, firstly uh, from within the director within the filmmaker uh, he or she has a vision that really has to come out and and secondly I think it's important for the overall film culture of that country to have those different kind of films so you know micro budget cinema uh, that, that's, that's what micro-budget cinema should be about. Η μουσική είναι η εσωτερική φωνή του ανθρώπου. Όταν αλλάζουν οι μουσικές συνήθειες ή νόρμες, ας πούμε, ε, αλλάζει η κοινωνία ολόκληρη. The latest film, uh, Songs of Revolution, is a documentary fiction hybrid, uh, and you uh, used a sort of radical distribution model in Greece where you toured uh, with the film and, and showed it in many sort of ad hoc uh, locations. Uh, could you explain how you did this? 
Yeah, yeah, it was an idea that um, came to me. I saw another filmmaker doing something similar and I thought, well, you know, it's getting hard to actually get one's work into film festivals these days, um, independent work, because the more commercial films seem to be taking over all the slots. So I thought, um, how can I still, you know, show this film to audiences and speak to them directly about it? And I decided to just give it a go in community spaces, cafes, even like squats, you know, anarchist kind of squats. Uh, I mean, the film's um, subject is um, uh, kind of, you know, a revolutionary uh, music, you know, songs of resistance. And, and so it kind of ties into the whole anti-authoritarian uh, scene in Greece. So I went to all these community centres, to universities, and had about 15 screenings um, in the space of just a few months, um, all through Greece, pretty much. I went to something like uh, 11 different cities. So it was uh, really fun. And, you know, all the venues were free. They all came with an audience. Um, people would put me up for a night. Um, so that was really fantastic. And I'm finding it's quite different in Australia, of course, if you try and do something like this. It just doesn't happen. Uh, even the smallest venue will ask you for a higher fee and and who's going to put you up for a night if you travel uh, interstate somewhere. What is the Australian art film scene like uh, at the moment? Uh, how would you describe it uh, and, and, and how do you find it? You sort of, you've got to tap into the people who are in their 30s and kind of see what they're up to and what's happening. Maybe in their 20s too, but in their 20s people still um, are of finding you know what they want to do uh, I mean certainly in Australia at the moment um, there are a few filmmakers uh, at that underground uh, kind of level making you know features narrative features experimental narrative features that are really exciting and they're not being recognized by the film festivals let, let's face it um, sometimes they're recognized by individual critics like on Facebook and things like that but these filmmakers are, are really struggling to, to get their work out there. And there, there's Sadin Salkic, there's your, yourself, you know, you've made two uh, low budget features in the last couple of years um, that should be getting more screenings. Um, there's a wonderful filmmaker in Melbourne called Matthew Victor Pastor, who's a, a Filipino, half Filipino filmmaker. He's actually under the age of 30. He's about 28 or so at the moment. And he's making terrific, um, you know, experimental features. Um, and then there's, um, so there's, there's those kind of people. And then there's a few other people a bit older, like myself, who are kind of um, sort of cranking away, just doing their thing. So there's a little bit of a scene, um, but it's totally underground these days. Unlike 20 or 30 or 40 years ago, especially, where this kind of independent alternative cinema was pretty much in the film festivals uh, continually and and also just kind of um, yeah respected and written about in um, even the daily newspapers so all that has changed completely the last 15 years now you've been shown in various film festivals in, including uh, Melbourne Film Festival uh, tell us about your experience with film festivals that's been really fantastic. I mean, if you can get into a, a major festival, you're basically uh, on a certain kind of stage um, where you're respected, you're, you're given like a QA and a opportunity, uh, you're written about in the catalogue, uh, just as if you were a, um, a film with a huge budget. And so I've, I've found it quite a good experience uh, every time I've been in a major uh, festival uh, and that hasn't happened too many times uh, maybe five or six times you know here and there a few overseas and and a few in in australia and the melbourne film festival I haven't screened one of my works for 20 years now so i've made about five features that have been rejected by them and um so i think you have to then look for other ways of uh, screening your film and uh, apart from online i mean online is just a it's a big, um, you know, melting pot of so many um, filmmakers and films that you just kind of get lost. It, it's almost close to being invisible to, to put your film on YouTube. Of course, it, it is there and it is a good thing overall. 
but you just don't um, get the attention and the uh, the concentration that you know people give you uh, when they're seated in a cinema in, in a film festival. So it's 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 uh, interesting times at the moment for independent film um, worldwide. I, I feel that um, uh, the the festivals are changing and they're becoming uh, just kind of glitzier and and just more showcases for commercial films um, rather than the independent cinema. So it's a bit of a problem, but uh, maybe that will change uh, sometime. So you're building this new film journal in Australia called Pure Shit. How is it coming together? Uh, what sort of people are coming on board and, and how is it sort of uh, shaping up? Uh, it, it's, coming, it's coming along quite nicely um, because I want to launch with a number of um, essays and, and sections uh, in, the, in, the mag in the website. Uh, I'm just kind of putting together a few things that take up a, a little bit of time. Uh, one thing I'm, I'm doing is like um, uh, an alternate uh, canon of great films, great Australian films. The, all those lists that we're familiar with that have Picnic and Hanging Rock and, and Mad Max and, and um, Strictly Ballroom in there, uh, yeah, I, I'm just going to do an alternative to that list where it's basically art cinema and, and underground cinema and even some horror films, some... Um, some trashy films uh, and short films, experimental films. So this is like a, a list I'm putting together with annotations, uh, which uh, I just want to get out there so uh, people can understand that there's a, another uh, aspect of Australian cinema apart from uh, the mainstream cinema, which at the moment is just put, being pushed in our faces so much here in Australia. and. Uh, apart from that, there'll be. Uh, I'm basically calling for writers to contribute to uh, the state of Australian cinema at the moment. So it'll be interesting to collate their thoughts, their ideas, and then present them. And and then uh, you know, as time goes on, I'll have some filmmaker profiles and some critiques of uh, different things. Um, uh, perhaps critiques of like um, film festivals or. Or the funding bodies, uh, Screen Australia, SAFC, that's the South Australian Film Corporation, for those who don't know. Um, both Mike and myself actually live in Adelaide. You're originally from Melbourne. Could you tell us what it's like being in Adelaide compared to Melbourne? Uh, I'm, I'm enjoying it. Uh, Adelaide, as everyone knows, is, is very quiet and, and peaceful and there's not too much going on. And, you know, in, in my mid-50s now, I actually value a bit of peace and... Uh, it's actually good to have a base like Adelaide and from this base I can then you know travel to Melbourne uh, as I need to, um, travel to Greece as I need to um, and, and actually yeah, get some good work done. Your new film journal, uh, Pure Shit, uh, when it starts to drop uh, provocative uh, truth bombs, uh, what will that be like uh, living in Adelaide as opposed to Melbourne? Well, that's an interesting question, Mike. Um, for me, uh, I, I could write uh, a, a quite a um, you know neutral comment, and I'm sure someone will find it uh, offensive. And <laughs> um, uh, but I guess if anyone does want to throw eggs at my front window, they're going to have to come to Adelaide to do it. Um, th these days, you know, it, uh, most things happen online and. And most people tend to stay inside. And uh, I think in Melbourne, most people probably only see each other when the Melbourne Film Festival comes around each year. And the rest of the time, they're sort of working away at home. And uh, I, th I think that's actually a, a big point. Um, in the past, uh, there used to be many more community gatherings of filmmakers and, and lots more film events, especially for independent cinema. And, you know, cooperatives existed. Um, Many more screenings existed. Uh, these days, uh, all that stuff's out the window because everyone's just at home working away on their own thing and they might have a few friends they see, but outside of that, people don't meet up and, and kind of mingle. So uh, who knows? But getting back to Adelaide, it's, um, yeah, it's just um, a, a good place uh, to, to get some work done. So I think that that's what some, some novelists who've come, come here from like Melbourne and, and Sydney have, 
have been attracted to Adelaide because they can actually get some good work done. What do you think it will be like making films in Adelaide as opposed to Melbourne? Well, I mean, the cost of living is actually, you know, much less in Adelaide. Uh, so that's really good. In, in Adelaide, you've got more scope for um, having a bit more money for your projects and, uh, and just getting them done because of that. Uh, so Melbourne, Melbourne has the advantage that there's more people, which means you can get some more interesting uh, faces um, for your film in terms of casting, uh, outside normal actors, I mean. What is it like making micro-budget films uh, in Greece as opposed to Australia? What are some of the differences? I think it's actually, yeah, just kind of easier in, in Greece. Um, th things like uh, production uh, problems are, are much easier. You can uh, pretty much film wherever you like and uh, most uh, public places won't mind you filming. Uh, even you just tell them uh, at the time that you're filming that you're going to do something and they're okay with it. Um, the only thing that the Greeks um, don't have is uh, patience and time. So you have to shoot everything very quickly and uh, they're a bit casual at times. So if you wanted to spend 10 hours uh, setting up some lights and, um, and then doing a few shots, uh, you'd be totally... Um, uh, lost in, in Greece because everyone would have wandered off uh, by then. Uh, so uh, I found it really, I found the, the people really easy to work with in Greece because uh, because of the crisis, you know, everyone, a lot of people are just kind of sitting around basically. So anything comes along and they can get involved in it, you know, they're really happy to do so. Whereas in, in Melbourne, uh, you know, people will think twice about it. Because Greece is in a sort of time of crisis, is it a bit like the uh, when you make a film over there, a bit like the New Deal, uh, and, and that people just want to be active and, and, and doing something? And is there uh, something like the Dole, some kind of government support uh, for those without employment? Uh, no, no. Uh, unemployed people um, are just left to fend for themselves. There's no welfare payments. Um, n not after a little while anyway. For about a year, they're okay. But then after that, um, people just have to live with their parents and and just make do with community resources. There really is like very little money around. And the, and, the, and when you're making a film, just the idea that uh, you can pay a higher uh, fee to, to, a, to a location um, is just, you know, ridiculous. Um, you know, even the, the Greek feature filmmakers who get funding from the Greek Film Centre in Greece basically make all their, their features for about €100,000, you know, which is like 150000 Australian dollars. Here in Australia, that, that would be impossible. Um, so they basically, you know, don't get paid properly and they cut a lot of corners. And, um, and yeah, the, the really kind of independent filmmakers there, yeah, they just hardly spend anything on their films. Maybe a few thousand euro. Yeah, just basically for absolute necessities. Who are some of the uh, filmmakers from the past uh, and the history of film that still excite you? Oh, well, there's, there's many. There's many. I mean, for me, I've always loved uh, Goddard and Brisson and, and Jean Renoir and many people. At the moment, the ones I'm excited about are more like people like Louis Bunuel, Jacques Tati, just uh, just people who are perhaps a bit more uh, surrealistic and uh, a bit more individual in the way they see cinema rather than traditional art cinema. You know, the, the art cinema that I've always loved uh, is still uh, really fantastic, but, but even that tends to uh, ossify and, and just get a bit mundane and, and bland uh, where the, the art auteurs just pretty much repeat themselves and 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 then everyone just copies them and 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 you know nothing nothing original is, is nothing really good is, is actually there in the end so as for Australia the ones I mentioned before the indie filmmakers um, they excite me um, at the more mainstream level uh, I've always liked someone like Sue Brooks um, her film, Looking for Grace, I, I really thought was terrific. 
Um, Rolf de Heer is, is a really good figure, of course, and his recent work has been really good. Uh, so there's a there's a few people in the more kind of mainstream scene, and uh, there's some, uh, but a lot of the indie filmmakers, a lot of the experimental ones, are, times are changing. A, a lot of them are, are getting older and not working much anymore. And there's no new uh, breed of kind of experimental filmmakers coming. I mean, there's a little bit of activity through the group uh, Artist Film Workshop, um, which we should mention, run by Richard Tui, and they put on screenings in Melbourne once a month, I think. They're mainly retrospective screenings of uh, past uh, experimental filmmakers, but but there's a group of them there in in the Artist Film Workshop that you know shoot on Super 8 and 16 mil and and hand process it themselves and and they make uh, their experimental cinema and Richard Tui is pretty much the, at the fore of, of that he's very productive uh, at the moment with his films so you know there's a bit of activity here and there and what can I say it's still you know conservative times overall in all of uh, world cinema but especially in Australia and we and I, and I hope that this new website I'm putting together sort of just pushes something th- different through if possible might inspire a young filmmaker to to just do something a little different what will the pure shit film journal uh, look like what what, what will its f- uh, functionality be the design um will basically be like a handcrafted design they uh, have content in them um so as for how radical the content uh, will be in, in my website, uh, only time will tell. But what happens in Australia at the moment is that there's not much uh, critique going on uh, of uh, films, of funding bodies, of, of all this kind of thing. So I hope to at least uh, have a little bit of uh, that kind of thing happening, a little uh, contrary voice um, within uh, all, all the... Um, landscape of uh, Australian film culture and and nothing more than that and but uh, I'll have fun doing it and and maybe some of the contributors will also have fun uh, writing some thoughts down your new film songs of revolution has played in Greece uh, in Sydney and Melbourne where it was introduced by film critic Adrian Martin how else uh, can people uh, find your film and see your film uh, Flinders University in Adelaide, yep, will screen my latest film. Uh, all this information can be gleaned from the website of the film, songsofrevolution.com. Uh, so if anyone's interested in that latest film of mine, uh, they can check that website uh, for information about it. As a veteran filmmaker in Australia, what advice uh, would you give to the next generation that's coming through at the moment? In this world, uh, it's really good if artists, and this includes filmmakers, um, can be individual, can actually find something of their own to say uh, and say it, no matter, you know, if it'll be misunderstood uh, or if it won't get funding, uh, if you won't be a success, if you won't get on that red carpet at the Cannes Film Festival, it's okay, it's okay, you don't have to be there. The important thing is to do some work that's really interesting. So the rest of us, you know, looking at your film, can actually get some pleasure out of it. Bill, thank you so much for coming on the program. Uh, you're an important mentor uh, for uh, you know many people of my generation and before my generation. So it's been wonderful to talk with you, and I really wish you the best with the new website, Pure Shit. Thank you, Mike. Get out of this, 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 get out of this